Hi, this video is a step-by-step -step guide on how to disassemble your Lynx R1. Start off by removing both magnetic foams in the front and in the back of the headset. Turn the headset around and place it on a table in front of you, with both optical blocks facing up. In order to protect the surface finish and the cameras, it is safer to place a piece of cloth or something soft underneath the front part of the headset. With a small Phillips screwdriver, remove all screws surrounding the lenses. In total there are eight, four per optical block. Remove the five screws securing together the fabric holder and the rest of the headset. You will find one screw on each side, left and right, two screws at the bottom, and the last screw just above the proximity sensor. Once all screws have been removed, you can use a spatula or your fingers to lift up the bottom part of the fabric holder. Now that the bottom part is free, press from side to side in order to unclip it from the rest of the shell. With a pick or a small pair of tweezers, push the rubber covers out of the shell. There are small black rubber plugs, aligned with the metal rods holding the optical blocks. You will find four, two at the top and two at the bottom. The top and bottom rubber covers don't have the same shape, so please make sure you store them in pairs. Underneath these rubber covers, you will find the rods, which you can unscrew with a small flathead screwdriver. Once again, make sure you store them in pairs, as the top rods are longer than the rods at the bottom. Once unscrewed from the main skeleton, you can slide them out. You can now gently lift up the left optical block and remove the isolating tape covering the connectors. Once you're rid of that, you will have to disconnect the flexible circuits from the optical block. Separate the connectors and gently pull on the FPCs as they still might be binded to the optical block with adhesive. You can store this optical block to the side and repeat the operation with the second one. You now have access to the aluminium chassis 
holding everything together. Remove all pieces of polyamide tape you will find attached to it. Three screws fasten together the USB PCB and the chassis. Unscrew them and set them aside. You can now begin unscrewing the aluminium frame from the rest of the headset, starting with both screws at the top left and at the top right. We recommend using a small set of pliers or tweezers to help extract the screws once they have been undone. Proceed with both screws at the bottom center of the headset. And then with the bottom left and right screws. Always making sure you sort them by size. Once that is done, you can now disconnect both speaker connectors from the bottom shell. Next, you can turn the headset back around and you will find on the top two screws that need to be undone. These ones secure the runner mechanism to the outer shells. Back to the inside of the headset, gently lift up all free-floating components and pry the aluminium chassis away from the rest of the shells. Now you can remove the tape on the top right, freeing the power supply connector. And with a small tool or your fingers, lever out the connector. Congratulations. The front and back are now entirely independent. Disconnect the FPC you will find the furthest to the left, the one with the triangular stiffener. before peeling off the tape between the SD jack PCB and the mainboard. To disconnect the SD jack PCB, remove all three screws.
When lifting up this PCB out of the front stack, you will disconnect the board to board connectors. Disconnect the USB PCB by disengaging the coaxial cable as such. Once that's taken care of, unscrew the last two remaining screws, holding the shells and the faceplate together. There are three steps remaining before being able to remove the outer shells. First, disconnect the key led FPC at the very top. Then, disconnect both antenna cables. And finally, lever both central FPCs from the board. You are now free to remove the shells. With the spatula, you can now disconnect the FPCs that used to hold together the optical blocks and the main board. You will find both connectors at the top center of the main board. You can now disconnect the second hand tracking FPC. Underneath this FPC is one last screw. Remove it. Left and right of the main board, you will find the two connectors responsible for powering the six off cameras. Disconnect these FPCs as usual by gently lifting them up. You can now entirely remove the PCB from the faceplate. Once the main PCB has been removed, you will find four screws. Unscrew them in order to remove the air guide. The whole air guide should come out nicely. Make sure you store it appropriately. At the bottom of the faceplate, left and right, you will find the six off and hand tracking camera holders. Each of them have two screws. By removing all eight of them, you will be able to extract the cameras from the faceplate. First remove the six off cameras and their flexible circuits.
Then proceed to remove the hand tracking cameras. Using a rigid tool, you can now unclip the fan from the faceplate. The final part of this video is about separating the aluminium chassis from the headband. Remove all three screws securing the runner mechanism to the chassis. Peel off the proximity sensor FPC to free the chassis. Last but not least, unscrew the hinge, dissociating the runner block from the headband. With your trusty pair of pliers, remove the screw by sliding it out. Make sure you store securely all the small parts from the hinge mechanism. The screw, the nut and the six washers. Thank you for watching this video. We hope it has helped you disassemble your headset safely and understand better what your Linksar one is made of.